we're going to start seated comfortably in Sukhasana. So Sukhasana is basically just a comfortable seat. So just cross your legs, crisscross applesauce. I like to cross about mid shin. You sit up nice and tall. And go ahead and take your yoga strap, your belt, your band, whatever you're using to your back across your ribs. So below the shoulders, but across the ribs. And having this underhand grip on the strap, your elbows resting on your sides. And I just want you to focus first on sitting comfortably on your sit bones and then sitting up tall, bringing your shoulders in alignment over your hips. We're just going to focus on deep rhythmic breathing, so somatic breath. Find a focal point and either let your gaze kind of get hazy there or maybe close your eyes. Just breathing in and out of your nose if it's comfortable or you can breathe in and out of your mouth. Let's slow the breath down, breathe deep. And when you take inhales, let your ribs feel as though they're expanding across the strap widening, giving you space, filling up with air. And on the exhale breath, just letting that strap feel like it's expanding across your ribs, widening on the ribs. And just like this, about five rounds of deep rhythmic breath. And filling up with breath all the way to the pelvic floor. And pulling that breath all the way up into your brain. When we slow down and tune in with our breath, it allows us to slow down and calm our nervous system. And it allows us to become a witness in our own bodies, checking in on the connections between body, mind, brain, and behavior. Take about one more full cycle of breath, spanning the ribs back on that strap, that belt. Let it go when you're ready. After you finish that breath, go ahead and gently blink your eyes open, maybe chin towards chest, and you can set that strap off to the side, but keep it within reaching distance. Draw the soles of your feet together, butterfly pose, knees are wide. And wherever you are from here, just take your feet slightly more forward, making it a bit more of a comfy seat. And you can rest your palms on your shins, your feet, your knees, your thighs, whatever's comfortable. And going clockwise will make three big slow circles. So take the chest forward, swivel off to that right side, take it back, arching the spine back, and then to that left. And repeat this nice and slow a couple more times. Maybe you close your eyes and tune into the sensations of your body, the space in between your ribs and your hips the sway of your chest, the opening or closing of the shoulders. And after you've done about three, switch directions. So swaying off counterclockwise now, really opening the heart, feeling the chest open, the throat open, the collarbones widen, and all the way to the back, arching the spine back. So you get to have this gentle flexion and extension of the spine. About one more time, all the way around the clock. And then pause when you're done up your center. And we'll extend from here our legs in front of us, pressing your heels forward so your toes reach back towards your sit bones. And then press your palms next to your hips into the ground. So you have this nice stack pose shape. It's really long L shape. Draw your navel in, just sit up tall, shoulders are stacked over hips, crown and tail are in alignment. Spine around a breath right here. 
Feel the solidness, the structure of your body. And with these flexed toes, you can even feel the muscles light up in the legs. And when you're ready, we're gonna lower to our backs. So make sure your feet are towards the top of your mat. And maybe you extend your arms out to get there or support yourself, whatever you need. You can get some core work out of it if you'd like. You can round your spine, touching your low back, then mid back, then up back until you get your head to the ground. And that's straps and reaching distance, so keep it close. We'll trace our legs right up to the sky, bringing the heels in alignment over the hips. Palms are long by your sides. Walk your shoulders down your back. And just make sure you're all comfortable. The natural curvature of your neck is lifted off the ground. Explore right here. Maybe you roll your ankles a little bit clockwise and counterclockwise, pointing the toes, flexing the toes back. And then take your right knee in towards your chest. Keep your left leg up towards the sky, trying to keep it lined up over your hips. Give that right knee a little hug in and maybe draw it all the way out towards the outer ribs, the armpit, and squeeze it in, noticing the sensation starting to open up in the hips and across the low back as well. Reach through your toes on that left leg up so you can get more sensation in the low back behind the left outer hip. And then we'll switch legs, bring the left knee to your chest, take the right leg towards the sky, toes point up, and start to hug that left knee over to the side, a little gentle opening of the inner hips, inner thighs. And then just going casually with movement, switch side to side, so alternate the squeeze in, just switching it out a little bit. Feeling the backs of the hamstrings start to open up as you have activation in the long pointed leg when you reach for the sky, stretching a little deeper. We'll just go about two more times or so. The next time your right knee is into your chest, pause there, squeeze that knee over and out. Take your left leg all the way to the earth. So reach it until it gets to the ground. Go ahead and take your strap around your right sole of foot from here. And then extend your sole of foot to the sky. So once more, bringing that alignment of heel, ankle over the hip. And you can have the strap grab with both hands and maybe gently shimmy the strap across the arch of your foot, activating the energy centers at the sole of your foot, maybe also heating your foot up if it's a little bit cold. <laughs> Nice, and from here, we're gonna to start to draw your right shin towards the top of your mat or towards your nose a little bit, getting into that hamstring a little bit deeper. And keep your shoulders nestled on the ground. And just breathe, so wanna ease into it. If you're my super flexible friend here, just take your time and ease into it without just hyperdrive going into it. And also, there could be a lot of tension and resistance in the hamstring, so you can keep your knee bent as much as you need. So you can feel comfortable, but start getting into the stretch. When you're ready, draw your foot back over your hip. Take the strap in your right hand. Left hand is welcome to stay by your side or on your left hip bone. Start to open up your right leg to the right side of your mat. Keep your left hip rounded. Now you can go out a little or you can go out all the way down. You just wanna open up the right hip, hamstring groin. And when you get to a nice comfortable spot, you can start to pull that foot towards the top of your mat. Again, just getting a little bit deeper. Come back to your breath always. Think about another cycle or two of breath. Heart is open, chest is wide, collarbones wide. And start to glide your leg back up one more time, heel over hip. Take your left palm to grab the strap. Your right hand can stay on your right hip. When you're ready, start to lengthen your leg over to the left side, stacking your hips so your low back will peel off the ground, but keep both of your shoulders grounded here. And if you have a yoga block, you're welcome to support it now under your shin or thigh. Otherwise, stay hovered. Stay engaged in both legs. So the bottom leg, point the toes. So you have some core activation. You've got the twist happening in the shoulders and the stretch happening in the legs. And keep your gaze at the sky or even look over your right shoulder.
And with an inhale breath, lag your leg back up, stack over your hip, both hips on the ground, pelvis neutral, bend your knee towards your chest. Take your left knee, bend it into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze and take that strap now to your left foot. Take your right leg long on the mat, rest it on the earth and extend your left foot to the sky, stacked over your hip. And start to draw a strap left and right, right and left, activating the energy centers on the bottom of your foot, creating a little bit of heat. You can flex your toes down. When you're ready, we're gonna start to pull the shin towards the nose or the top of your mat, opening up your hamstring. Always taking our time today, easing into our poses, making sure we sift through all the things happening on our minds and find our breath. Draw your leg back over your hip so it's stacked and start to open up to the left side now. Right hand can be on your right hip. So you've got an active engagement on that strap, it's taut. You can go to a nice stable hover somewhere. Maybe if you reach the ground, that's great too, whatever works. Start to pull that leg up towards the top of your mat when you found a sweet spot just to get into the hamstring, the left inner thigh, just a little bit more. Your gaze is in the direction of the sky. Your eyes might be closed. Right hip is in the ground right now. One more cycle of breath. And on an inhale, start to glide your leg back up. One more time over the hip. Grab the strap with the right hand, left palm to your left hip. When you're ready, start to open up to the right, getting the left outer hip. Nice deep stretch. You can stack those hips on top of one another. Keep your left shoulder grounded. You can look up or to the left. Activate your bottom right leg. So flex or point the toes so you have engagement. Find about two more full, deep, slow, rhythmic cycles of breath. Nice. And with the next inhale, draw your leg back up, align it over your hip, pelvis on the ground. Draw your left knee into your chest, your right knee into your chest. Take the strap off to the side. We're done with it for now. Give yourself a little squeeze. And then stack your knees over your hips. Shins are parallel to the ground. You can flex your toes. Bring your palms to the lower thighs, just above the knee. So you're actually in the muscle of the thighs, not on the kneecap, not on your patella. So it's a little bit of core engagement. Take a nice breath in right here where you are. Draw your navel to the ground. And start to gently press your knees forward, keeping everything parallel. The knees are going slightly slightly forward of your hips. Really notice the arch in the back. Draw the navel to the ground to keep the arch back down. This is low ab work. And then draw your knees back in as you exhale over the hips. So inhale, pressing forward. Exhale, squeezing back to that alignment. Let's do three more of these on your own. Taking your time. When you draw the knees back, press into your palms to get a little more of that core lift up. Let's go one more time. Press forward. And then press back against the hands. Knees to chest. Take the knees wide. Gently rock side to side, pressing the sacrum. A little back. And we're going to take the legs long on the ground. Arms by your side and take a moment to breathe. A little mini Shavasana. We've got one more core activation. And it's actually one of the five Tibetan rites. When you're ready, friends, to activate this right, which activates the chakras and activates our body systems. 
We're gonna bring the chin into the chest, start to lift the head, neck, and shoulders up and look forward, then draw your legs up over the hip heels. Pause here and then lower it all back down. And to bring the breath in when you're ready, inhale, ground your chin, your chest, look up, cover the shoulders, draw your legs up. Exhale, go long on the mat. Pause in between each round. We've got just one more. Your next breath in, chin to chest, bring the legs up, look at your thighs. Exhale, round all the way back to the earth. All done with those. Draw the soles of your feet together, knees wide, scoop to Baddha Konasana, resting down angle pose. Flip your palms up or maybe bring one hand to heart, one hand to stomach. Connect back in with your breath. Notice if it's shaky, rigid, you can smooth it out, find a fluid cycle of breath. And start to draw your knees together, pull them into your chest, and grab behind your thighs. We'll rock and roll on our back four or five times, make our way up to tabletop, crossing our ankles. And if this doesn't float your boat, you can let your knees fall off to the side, support yourself up, coming into all fours. And when we get to all fours, we want the shoulders stacked over the wrists, the palms are spread wide, the knees are under the hips. You can either have toes tucked or untucked, that's completely up to you. But first we wanna start with a neutral spine. So pull the belly up towards the sky, reach back through your sit bones, reach forward through the crown of your head. Take a big breath in. When you exhale, cat pose, round your back towards the sky, chin to chest, maybe looking back past your thighs. So just pause and feel the shape in your body, stretching the shoulder blades back. And this is a nice shape because we often are more hunched, so this shape feels more natural to us. And on your inhale, cow pose, soften your belly down without any jagged spots in the spine and gently press the earth away. So we don't want to arch and look up here. We just want to soften through the cervical spine. Our back has natural hinge shapes that are unique to us. And then the joints around our natural hinge vertebra get more pressure. So when we see this super arched jagged spine, it's not healthy. So just keep it light, soften your belly, take a breath in, and then exhale, cat pose, arch your spine to the sky. And inhale, cow, peeling the heart forward, being very gentle, getting the stretch in the lower abs. Your exhale is cat. And your inhale is cow pose. Go two more rounds on your own with your breath, matched with your movement. And come back to that neutral spine when you're ready. Really reaching forward through the crown, reaching back through the sit bones. Left palm is your base. Press into the thumb and index finger side of your hand. Sweep your right arm up to the sky, feel the expansion across your chest, and then sweep your right palm underneath your left arm for thread the needle, lower to your right ear or temple. And you can stay like this. Left arm is welcome to lengthen forward to get the left side body open. If you want, you can even take that left palm across, left forearm rather, across your low back. Mm -hmm. Try to keep your deep breath here. Gravity changes the way our nostril breathing can work for us, so the tension, the pressure in the head. So just finding your breath. Bring your left palm back by your left shoulder. Press into the ground, thumb and index finger side. Sweep your right palm up towards the sky. Maybe you roll your wrist a couple times here. And then plant your palm under your shoulder, neutral spine tabletop. Pressing into the right thumb and index finger, there's a grounding point right there in that flesh. Sweep your left palm up towards the sky and thread the needle, lowering to your left temple or ear. 
Maybe you lengthen the right arm forward for the side body or sweep it across your low back. You can always just keep it planted right where we started at the shoulder. Bring your right palm by your shoulder, press down in the thumb and index finger side. Sweep your left palm up to the sky, big full breath in, maybe roll the wrist a couple times. And then exhale, plant the left palm down. Tabletop pose. So we'll open our heart a little bit. Walk your palms forward towards the top of your mat. And let your heart start to hinge down. Keep your hips stacked over your knees, lowering to your forehead if comfortable. You can always press a block or a blanket or a folded sweatshirt or something here if that's more comfortable too, under the forehead. Find about three rounds of full deep breath. With your next breath in, start to lift your torso up, walk your palms back to tabletop underneath your shoulders. And go ahead and tuck your toes from here and press your hips up for your downward facing dog. Booty to the sky. Make sure your palms are shoulder width apart, your feet are hips width apart, and pedal out your knees, bending, lifting and lowering your heels. And always pressing through the thumb and index finger sides of your hands because that's the side of the forearm bones that's stronger and that'll help protect your wrists. And then really sending the hips high, getting the shoulders away from the ears. Nice friends, from your down dog, just driving your heels towards the mat and keep your knees as bent as you need, especially if there's any low back tension or pain. And then from here, we're going to pause in our shape, hinge forward so your shoulders are over your wrists, your heels are high on your toes, you're in a high plank shape, really send the booty, uh, well, keep the booty in line with your heels and shoulders so you have this nice long line, to send the navel towards the sky, <laughs> and then gently release your knees to the ground, hug your elbows back, lower your chin and chest towards the earth, then untuck your toes and elongate your legs behind you. Press into the toenail parts of your feet and press up so you can lift your heart to this cobra pose shape. Lift the kneecaps up because they're elevated and hovered. Keep your gaze soft past your nose. If you'd like to find straight arms, lift up the heart. Take a breath and we'll send the hips back for child's pose, resting your hips on the heels. Bring the big toes to touch behind you. Take your knees wide, forehead to the ground, arms stretched in front of you. Resting here, the length of the spine. If your shoulders are tight, draw the elbows out wide. Nice. And as you're ready, rise up to tabletop pose. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. From your down dog, soften your knees and gently walk towards the top of your mat into your first forward fold. So your feet are still hips width or behind your wrists. You can rest your torso on your thighs with bent knees or find straighter legs. Maybe you walk your palms left and right, right and left, stretching the hamstrings a little bit. And see if you can nod your head no and yes. Soften the neck muscles, crown of head hangs heavy towards the earth. Maybe you take your palms to your elbow creases, a little bit of a ragdoll pose. Swaying the weight side to side. So release your hands to the mat, bend your knees, round your spine, stack one vertebra at a time as you slowly rise up to standing. Pull a full inhale into the brain so that oxygen comes with you as you rise up the fatty. Soften your shoulders down on your back. Hands can face forward, standing neutral with your feet, hips width apart, shoulders stacked over the hips, hips over the ankles. The heels, nice body alignment, neutral spine. On an inhale, sweep your palms all the way up. 
Not an exhale, bring your hands to your heart, thumbs towards your sternum. Inhale, sweep all the way up, mountain pose. Exhale, hands to your sternum. Press your heels into the mat, drive up with your arms, inhale. Exhale, hands to your sternum. This time, press into the balls of your feet. Inhale up, maybe lift the heels, rise up, activate the legs, stay balanced on tiptoes. Heels down, hands to heart. And two more times with the heels lifting. As you inhale, reach up, heels come up, spread those toes wide, press them down, feel the calves light up. Exhale, pull it down. Your inhale breath rises up, press into the toes, get a little taller. On your exhale, pull it down. And one more time, inhale, lift those heels, activate the legs, squeeze the butt muscles, and settle back down. You're gonna tee the arms out wide. Palms are facing the ground, your palms are in line with your shoulders. So this is actually gonna be right one of the five Tibetan rights. I'm introducing this because there's a challenge coming up. So turning clockwise very, very slowly three times. If you're like me, you might get dizzy really easily. So keep your gaze at the floor, take as long as you need, start to turn clockwise, literally taking as long as you need. But I want three full circles. And you can take it and challenge yourself and make it a little faster or keep it really, really slow, but you keep track of what number you're on. And if you need to pause at any point in time, that's fine. Keep reaching the arms out so your chin is tucked, Keep the look, the gaze at the floor. And I've got one more to do. I don't know where you're at, but when you get there, if you're there before me, bring your hands to your hips and rest. When you get back, hands to your hips, feet are wide, maybe even wider than your hips now. You can close your eyes if you want. Just take a moment, settle in, especially if there was any dizziness. And that activates the chakras, they say. <laughs> chakras are this line of seven energy points that right up and down Shashuna Nadi on the spinal cord. And when you're ready, blink your eyes open. If they were closed, feet come back under the hips. Take a breath in, reach for the sky. Option to you if you want your heels lifted or not. And on the exhale, forward, fold all the way down, heels in the ground, fold in half. Nice, we'll find our first halfway lift right here. Nice long spine. So you can always bring in blocks if you want anytime you're in a forward fold or in a halfway lift. We want the spine long, trying to parallel the torso to the ground. Weight is shifted more in the toes, but your heels stay grounded. Palms can be on the ground, shins, blocks, thighs, maybe even squeezing back. And keep a slight tuck of your chin so we're not looking up because notice that crams the neck. So you want to really reach long through the neck, squeeze the shoulders down your back. Soften your knees so they're not hyperextending. Take a breath in. Now your exhale, go ahead and fold all the way in half. Step it back to tabletop pose, knees down. Bring your toes together, knees wide, child's pose, press it back. Lengthen your arms in front of you. Take a breath in, sigh a breath out. On your inhale, rise back up to tabletop. Tuck your toes, high plank, heels over the toes, shoulders over the wrists. Shift slightly forward, shoulders ahead of wrists. So use the core to activate those muscles. Then bring your knees down, chin and chest down, hug the elbows back. Untuck your toes, lengthen your legs behind you. Cobra pose, gently press into your palms, lift your heart. Lift the knees because the toes are down, legs are active. Option to straighten your arms, lift all the way up. Take a breath in. Exhale, child's pose, booty back on the heels. Lengthen your arms, rest your forehead on the mat. Take a full breath in, full breath out. We inhale, tabletop pose. Tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Nice, and shift the weight to your left foot, sweep your right leg up towards the sky. Notice if you distributed weight on your shoulders from one side or the other, keep it equal. Take a breath in, reach up through your leg. Exhale, low lunge, plant your foot between your palms and bring your back knee to the ground. 
to walk your hands up gently towards your thigh. Anjaneyasana, this nice low lunge. So if there's any knee pain, you can put a blanket or a towel or double fold your yoga mat. Shoulders over hips. You can let your left hand hang by your side. Right palm can stay on your thigh. Shoulders are back. Take a breath in. As you exhale, we're going to hinge the hips together forward and then down. Lengthening into the groin and hip flexor. And it's all right if the knee is forward of your ankle here, unless if you know you have ankle pain. The weight distribution bearing load is fine. Now scissor your inner thighs as you press your foot into the ground, use the right hamstring, rise back up to those 90 degree bends in the knees. And slowly lower down this time as you hinge forward, option to bring that left arm up overhead. And inhale, come back up, bring your left palm by your hip. And two more times, just like that. Exhale, hinge forward, take your time, go slow. Inhale up, scissoring the inner thighs. And just one more time, exhale, hinge forward. And inhale, come back up. Now taking your left palm to your right outer thigh, bring your right palm to reach behind you, a little twist. And if this is a lot on the shoulder, you can bring your hand to your sacrum. Still activating the legs by squeezing the inner thighs towards one another. And your hips are both level. So the left hip forward, right hip back. Maybe you start to look past your right shoulder. And then slowly unwind, plant your left palm under your left shoulder. You wanna lengthen your left leg back behind you a little bit more and bend your heel up towards your glute. So this is a nice big hamstring activation and a quad stretch. And if it's accessible for your right palm to reach back and capture that foot, go ahead and grab it. If not, a strap is always here for you. You can take that strap, capture around your foot and hold that strap in place. You want to pull the heel towards the glute to get the hamstring or rather the quadricep nice and stretched. You can look back past your shoulder. You have an option to, with your right leg, you can take the toes, pivot out to the right side in the same direction as your knee and open up that hamstring a little bit, giving you more inner thigh stretch. And start to bring the right toe and knee forward if you pivot it out. Gently release your left leg to the ground. Bring your right hand forward. Nice. Lift your left knee off the ground. Step your foot back to downward facing dog. Take a moment to pedal it out. Get a little juicy love. Nice. From your down dog, inhale to your high plank shoulders over the wrists. Exhale, lower knees, chin and chest. Hug your elbows back so they brush your side bodies. Inhale to your cobra pose, shoulders down your back, knees lift, heart is forward, maybe all the way up to your up dog with straight arms. Option to lift the legs off the ground. Exhale, child's pose, knees wide, send it back. Full cycle of breath. Start to rise up to tabletop, tuck your toes, exhale breath, downward facing dog. Nice, when you're ready, shift the weight into your right foot, inhale, your left leg goes up and back. Try to keep your shoulders and hips squared with one another. Big breath in to reach through that long leg. Exhale, low lunge, step between your palms, bring your back knee down. Start to walk your palms up to your thigh. 90 degree bends in the knees. Soften your shoulders. Pull the navel in to activate the low abdomen. Right palm can hang by your side. Take a breath in. Exhale, start to hinge the hips forward and down together so they stay in the same line. Enjoy the stretch in the right hip flexor groin. And scissoring the inner thighs, pressing through your left foot, rise back up. Nice, and you exhale again, lower down. Option to draw the right hand up. 
Inhale, pressing up, rise. Exhale, lower back down. Scissor the thighs to lift. And one more time, exhale, lower down. Inhale, hug those thighs and rise up. Nice, take your right palm to your left outer thigh and sweep your left arm back so you're twisting in the shoulders. The hips both stay forward like headlights. You can always bring the left palm to your sacrum. Softening your left shoulder from your ear, letting your collarbones widen, making sure you still have the alignment of crown of head and tail bone. The spine is long, you're just getting some rotation. One more breath in, you get a little taller in that spine, maybe scissoring the thighs here. On your exhale, just twist just a little deeper. On your inhale, start to unwind, plant your right palm under your right shoulder, pressing into the grounding flesh of thumb and index finger. Lengthen your right leg behind you, and then bend your heel towards your glute. Left palm sweeps back and captures the foot or use your strap. Now you can pull that heel towards your glute to go deeper into the quad, or you can kick your foot into your hand to get a little into that left shoulder. Maybe you start to take your gaze back towards the left shoulder. An option to keep your left toes and knee forward where they are, stacked in alignment, or pivot them together to the left a little bit and open up that left hip, letting your thighs sink towards the mat even more. Start to pivot the toes forward, stacked alignment. Gently release your foot behind you. Plant your palm to frame your foot. Lift your right knee. Step it back to downward facing dog. Pedal it out just a little bit. From an inhale, find your high plank. Shift forward high on the toes. Exhale, knees, chin and chest lower to the ground. Hug your elbows back. Inhale, cobra pose, shoulders hug down, lift the knees, maybe straight arms for an up dog. And exhale, child's pose, knees down, toes together, hips back. One cycle of breath. On your inhale, tabletop, tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, sweep your right leg to the sky. Exhale, low lunge, step between your palms. Pivot your left heel down so your left toes point to the left side of your mat. Inhale, warrior two, rise up. So your right knee and ankle are stacked, right knee and toes tracking forward to the front of your mat. You've got about heel to arch alignment in the feet. Really press that left little toe down on the back behind you. Shoulders are stacked over your hips. Your heart is to the side, but your legs, their inner thighs are opening. Your left leg is activated so that quad is fired up. And extend your arms forward and back. So again, the right knee and ankle are stacked. Toes are facing the top of your mat. Yeah, nice, Enid. Just settle in. Look past your front right fingertips. We'll find some movement here. So on an inhale breath, straighten your front leg, reach your arms overhead to touch, looking towards this left side of your mat. When you exhale, melt it all back down. So you're looking to the left of your mat rather than forward. Nice, on an inhale, reach up, straighten your front leg. And on an exhale, melt and deepen it back down. We've got just one more time. The right knee is bent over the ankle. The left leg is long. The toes are 90 degrees on the left. Inhale, rise up, touch your palms. Exhale, melt back down into that warrior two. Nice, now hinge and reach, reach, reach forward. Try to keep the leg statue still, extended side angle. So right elbow or forearm to your right thigh, left palm to the sky. And then instead of sinking those ribs in, activate both side bodies so you are long. Nice. 
Just reach for the sky, maybe look up, maybe look down. Hold the strong legs, pressing and ripping the mat in half with the muscles. With your next breath in, rise up to standing, touch your palms overhead, pivot your right toes forward. So both toes are facing the left side of your mat. Take a deep breath in as you reach and get a little taller. And exhale, tee your arms out wide. So we're in this nice big V shape. You can keep your arms here or take them to your hips. Keep the spine long, start to fold halfway. You can slightly pigeon toe the heels out, toes in if that's helpful. Keep the knees soft. Hold in this about halfway lift, torso parallel to the ground. When you're ready, fold all the way in half. Casarita, wide leg, forward fold. Hands keep on the blocks or the earth. You can take a bind, you can grab your ankles, whatever feels good. Nod your head, no one yes a few times. Soften the neck muscles. Find any movement you need in your legs here, shifting the weight side to side, or just hanging out. Stretching the whole back of your body, taking pressure off your vertebra, opening up the calves, the hamstrings. Press your palms under your shoulders, come into a halfway lift, a long spine. Take a big breath in, find that cat back around your tailbone up, and exhale, fold in half again. On an inhale, come back up to that halfway lift. And pivot to the right, so your right toes pivot forward, low lunge. So crawl your palms to the right. Your feet are hips width apart still. Your left heel is lifted over the toes. Step it back to downward facing dog. Nice. So you're gonna do that same thing on the left side. When you're ready, sweep your left leg to the sky. Big breath in. And low lunge, step between your hands. So we're setting up warrior two. The left foot is forward. The left knee and ankle are stacked. The right heel pivots down so it's parallel to the short edge of your mat. Press into your feet, slowly rise up to standing. Nice, awesome. Sweep the arms out and look past your front arm, which is your left fingers. Soften the shoulders from your ears. I'm switching so I can see you. The left knee is tracking forward over the toes. You should be able to see your big toe in your, your middle, through the toe next to the big toe. Shoulders over hips, draw the navel in, get longer in your spine, soften into your body. Press the right little toe into the mat. Fire up your right quad, get a little taller in the side body. Let's find some movement. Inhale, straighten your leg, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, deepen into your warrior two. Virabhadrasana Dwi. Inhale, press into your feet, rise up, long side body. Exhale, deepen into your lunge. One more time, friends, rise up, inhale, working those leg muscles. Exhale, deepen. Stay for a breath in. Can you spread your wings a little wider, open the collarbones. Exhale, reach forward as far as you can, keeping the legs right where they are, and then extended side angle, tick tock the arms, use that forearm as a thigh, or forearm as a, the thigh as a shell for the forearm. <laughs> and now I want your heart to be open to the side, not down, just really open up, so twisting in the ribs a little bit in the shoulders, keeping the tailbone lined up with the back heel. Got it, nice. Preparing to press your feet down, just drive down into the earth. Inhale, rise up, touch your arms overhead and bring your toes forward. So we've got this standing tall pyramid. You can slightly pigeon toe in with the heels out, the toes in. Take that breath in to get taller here, activate all the body. And as you exhale, tee your arms out nice and wide in line with your shoulders. Take a breath in here to prepare as you exhale, fold halfway. You can have your arms stay out. You can bring them to your hips if that's better. Soften the knees. Just find your torso parallel to the ground. Slight tuck of your chin, reach through your crown. Take an inhale. Exhale, fold all the way down. Prasarita, wide leg forward fold. Hands to the ground, to blocks, to your ankles, whatever you need. And you can pedal it out here in the knees. You can shift the weight side to side, walking hands from one ankle to the other, whatever you need to do, friends. Take 
And then plant your palms under your shoulders, find a halfway lift, inhale. Find that cat back, arch your pubic bone, back and up and exhale, fold in half even deeper. The more open in the first chakra, the grounding chakra. Nod your head, no one yes. So the neck muscles are soft, the crown of head hangs heavy towards the earth. Palms under your shoulders, find that halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, low lunge to the top of your mat to the left. So left toes and knee pivots forward, right heel is over the toes. Step back, downward facing dog. Take a moment to pedal it out, those hamstrings feel pretty open. Nice. So inhale, soften your knees, look forward. And exhale, walk to the top of your mat. Just tiptoe it forward, forward fold at the top. Halfway lift, breathe in, get that long spine. Exhale, fold in half. And inhale, slowly rise all the way up, standing mountain, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. And distribute the weight to your left foot, spread the toes wide, tree pose on the right. So open up your right knee to the right side. Option to keep your foot kickstanded or lift it up and press it into the calf muscle or maybe pull it all the way up into your inner thigh, whatever you need, wherever you're at. Then focus on the standing leg, pressing the standing leg muscles into the foot as much as the foot is pressing into the muscles. You have the option to stay here, close your eyes if you want balance challenge, maybe grow branches, anything that calls to you, taking vines, hand mudras, whatever works. And come back to a deep rhythmic breath, fluid, soften your gaze. Hands come back to your heart center if they're not already there. Then we're gonna kind of break our branch. So take the foot away from the leg, wherever you're at. As an inhale, draw your knee forward in line with your hip, closing the hips off. And then exhale, release your foot to the ground. And feel free to roll out that opposite ankle a little bit. Just give yourself some love. And then we're going to switch sides. So spread the left toes nice and wide back to your base. Stand up tall and open up the right knee and inner thigh. Find wherever you're going to be situated. You can always change this as you go. It's not committed to staying in one place, right? Get, get that energy meeting in the midline. So two opposing muscle systems uniting, pulling the energy up and down. And if you want to grow branches, grow your branches. They don't have to be the same. They can be completely unique. Stand nice and tall in the standing leg. See if you can straighten the leg a little bit and keep that whole side body in one nice line. And if you didn't already, you can always explore closing one eye, switching it out, just really challenging the balance. And try to draw your knee open to the side just a little bit more, getting that inner thigh, the hips nice and open in the front line. One more cycle of breath. When you inhale, start to draw your branches back to heart center if they grew out somewhere else. And we'll break our branch, break that energy commit, take the foot from the leg and slowly draw the knee forward and then plant your foot down. Nice. And go ahead and pedal out that other leg, roll the ankle gently, some relief. Nice. Arms by your side, shoulders down your back. Inhale, sweep your arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, breath in. 
And exhale, tabletop pose, come down to your knees. Make sure your knees are hips with distance apart, tuck your toes. And we're gonna sit back on our heels with those toes tucked. So we're gonna have some rolling camel practice to open the heart, just a couple, no worries. So you can start with your right hand on your right heel. Your left palm can sweep across. When you inhale, we're gonna sweep all the way up, lifting the hips and heart. So here's the side view. So reach up, see if you can always go deeper, stay where you are. And then exhale, return to seated on the heels. And we switch sides, left palm to left heel, right palm across. On your inhale, press your hips forward and up, lift your heart up. Exhale, take a seat. We'll do that two more times on each side. Inhale, lift. Exhale, return. Left palm to left heel. Inhale, rise your heart up. Exhale, seated. Right palm to right heel. Inhale, lift your left arm, your hips, your heart. Exhale, sit it down. This is our last one. Left palm to left heel. Inhale, reach your right arm over and cross and up. Exhale, take a seat. Now, hero's pose, if you have a block, go ahead and untuck your toes, sit that block in between your heels and take a seat right there. So the tops of your ankles are rested on the mat. If you don't have a block, you have the option, of course, to sit all the way down. If that's not comfortable, just sit on top of your heels, bring them together. Rock pose, one hand to heart, one hand to stomach. Close your eyes. Bring your chin towards your chest to stretch all the way through the cervical spine. Let your belly press into your hand when you breathe in and contract back away as you exhale your breath. And just give yourself a moment to feel and be a witness to your practice so far. Notice any dialogue you're having with yourself. Maybe it's very unconscious or maybe it's pretty conscious. When you're ready, you can release your palms to your thighs. Gently blink open your eyes. You're going to hinge forward so you can remove the block. We're going to lower to our back. So sway off to one of your hips, send your legs in front of you, and lower all the way to the mat. We're going to plant our feet, hips with distance apart for bridge pose. Walk your palms along by your sides and press them into the ground. And keep your chin off of your chest. Take an inhale breath, press into your feet, lift your hips and heart towards the sky, and walk your shoulders down your back. You want to keep your gaze at the sky, so avoid looking around, looking side to side. You want to protect our neck. You want to keep your knees in line with your hips, so pressing all 10 toes into the ground. Draw your chin towards the crown of your head. And activate your glutes here. They're not fired up to full capacity, but they are turned on to help get that lift. Option to interlace your fingers underneath you, re-walking your shoulders down your back, pressing your forearms down, assisting in the lift. Couple rounds of breath, bridge pose. And remove any binds you have and slowly lower your up back, mid back and low back to the mat. Take your feet wide, let your knees come into the midline and drop in on one another. Neutral spine and a couple rounds of breath. And with your next inhale, hug your knees towards your chest, give yourself a squeeze. Grab behind your thighs, we will one more time rock and roll up to a seat. So four, five, or six, or seven times, get some momentum, or you can draw your knees off to the side and make your way up. Nice, so when you get to the top, 
We're gonna take our legs wide. No, rather we're gonna extend them right in front of us. My bad. You can have one block with you. Take your left leg out like a tree pose. So the left sole of foot to the right inner thigh. Go ahead and place that block if you have it towards your right shin on the inside. Reach your arms to the sky, flex your right toes, big breath in. Exhale, fold over that leg. And the block is just here. If you want, you can rest your forehead on the block. And then we have three different levels, settings of the block. So whatever feels good. You can grab anywhere along your leg. You could also use a strap if you'd rather stay more upright and flex into the hamstring muscles and calf. And once more, we're slowing down, quieting, calming the nervous system. Eyes may or may not be closed here. And stretching into the lumbar spine, getting that gentle rounding and the natural curvature to the, to the upper back. Take about one more cycle of breath. And on an inhale, press yourself up. That block can move off to the side. Left palm behind you on the ground. You can tend to those fingers if you want. Finding a wild thing variation. Right arm will sweep around and up. Press into your left side foot and your right heel. Lift the hips up to the sky. Open up the heart. You're kind of curving over to the right. And then slowly lower your hips back to the ground. Nice. Nice, Karen. Awesome, bring the left knee up so the left sole of your foot is in towards your hip bone as much as you're comfortable. Left palm again goes behind your sacrum, right arm to the sky, breathe in. And as you exhale, twist to the left side. You can wrap the elbow crease around the leg and hug it in, or maybe take your elbow to the outer thigh and press them in on one another. Right leg is active. Shoulders soft from the ears, lengthen with your inhales and twist with the exhale. Let's find one more breath in, one more breath out. And slowly unwind with your inhale and extend both legs in front of you. You can shake them out if you need. We'll do the same step on the other side now. So bring your right sole of foot into your right inner thigh. Left leg is long. Option to bring a block by the shin. Take a breath in as you reach up. Exhale, fold over your long leg. Left toes are flexed back, pressing the heel forward. Grab anywhere along that leg that's comfortable. You start to find the natural curvature of your spine as you fold down. New shapes are awesome when you wake up. They're excellent right before bed. And they're really good for the low back. One more cycle of breath. Use your palms to walk yourself up with your next inhale. Right palm behind your right sacrum. Left palm reaches across by your right knees. Press into your body. Lift your hips and heart up towards the sky. Your wild thing variation. Full inhale breath. On your exhale, gently return your hips to the ground. And plant the right sole of your foot on the ground, hugging the heel in close to the right hip. Right palm can stay behind your sacrum if you'd like. Left arm to the sky, get tall and long here, breathe in. And exhale, twist to the inner thigh, twist to your right. Keep the left leg active in front of you. Breathe in as you rise up, lengthening your spine, giving space to the vertebra. And exhale, just twist you even deeper, really in the shoulders, the spinal rotation. Hips stay grounded. One more breath in. One more breath out. Inhale, slowly unwind and let both legs lengthen in front of you. You can shake them out after holding that bend uniquely in each leg. Nice. Go ahead and lower to your back. We're done staying upright. Take it down. Happy baby pose. Hug your knees towards your chest. Squeeze them to your ribs and capture either your thighs or the soles of your feet. 
Now you can always use a strap here as well if that's something you wanted to do, especially if you have one of these strappy bands. You can put it around the soles of your feet, press your elbows to the inner thighs, draw the knees down. There's so many ways to do these things. So just finding what works for you. Make sure your collarbones are wide, your chest is open, the shoulders are soft into your mat. Soften your face, swipe your brow, smooth, part your teeth. Deep breath in, and sigh it out. Nice, draw your knees into your chest and give yourself a nice tight hug, ball pose. You can wrap the arms around your shins if you'd like, bow your chin in towards your chest, squeeze everything, all the juju out. And then release your body when you're ready to Shavasana, long on the mat. Extend your legs in front of you, slightly wider than your hips. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. Take your arms as wide as you'd like, palms to the sky or resting on your body. Inviting in some stillness, a release of the physical practice, a return to your deep rhythmic breathing. Our yoga practice is really beneficial in so many ways, but one of the ways is just giving you that check-in with yourself, the mental, emotional, and physical as well. So we often tend to not acknowledge some of our needs. We kind of close away some of the things we don't want to face. when we're presented with our breath, with our movements and the practice, we often are presented with some of the stuff that we try to often ignore or just don't pay attention to. So using our breath and being able to become a witness allows us to grow. So just take note of your practice today without judgment. Just see where the learning might have been. In body, mind, behavior, spirit. Take about three more full deep rhythmic cycles of breath. Letting your belly rise on the inhale towards the sky. Fall back gently to earth with the exhales. Pulling oxygen into your brain as you breathe in. Maybe opening your lips, sighing the breath out if you'd like. Let's take one more full cycle of breath. Inhale. And exhale. We'll close out our practice together. You start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe roll your wrists and your ankles, getting little sparks of life and movement back in the body. Go ahead and reach your arms long overhead, point your toes on in front of you. Big good morning stretch. Maybe you actively yawn here, arch your back off the mat, whatever feels good. But you can either draw your knees into your chest or gently just fall and roll off to your favorite side. Use your bicep as a pillow for a moment. And then keeping your eyes closed or a hazy gaze at the floor, gently support yourself up with both hands to that comfortable seat.
And Sukhasana pose, once again, the comfortable seat. Just kind of crisscross applesauce, cross mid shin. Sit nice and tall, let your shoulders come up to your ears and roll down your back. Chin towards chest to stretch through your spine, all the way through the ground. Pull your shoulders back over your hips so you probably need to sit back a little bit more than you're used to. And draw your hands to your heart. Just having a little extra juicy love today for one another in this space. And saving the best bits of juicy love just for yourself. I draw my hands up to my third eye space in between the brows, spaces of light and intuition of all the teachers and yogis and instructors and gurus and all those special, magical, crazy things from past, present, and in the future. And from my heart to yours, in love and light, namaste, and thank you. See you next.